federal regulator for compulsory specifications has found a deficiency in the canning process during the manufacturing process of the 400 gram tins of pill charts. It's been discovered that uh, during source filling stage, an incision was made in the can that caused some of the cans to lead, leak. Uh, so this led to the recall of the cans of pill charts from wholesalers, retailers and informal traders. The regulator has also added that the chili sauce variant of the product was also needed to be recalled. The recall that we are currently doing, it is a precautionary measure put in place. At this stage, we do not have no fatalities. At this stage, there is no food poisoning that has been reported. But because we have picked up this canning deficiency, the manufacturer, the regulator have taken steps to ensure that we put controls in place that we do not get any of these um, fatalities if possible or there is no consumer that could be um, affected in terms of food poisoning. With um, regards to the recall at this stage, most of the product has been recalled. The affected products, it's mainly 2019 products that were produced by West Point on the production line, line number two. So in terms of the recall, most of these products are still in the possession of the processor because the deficiency was picked up in the warehouse of the processor. The deficiency could not be picked up during the time of production because it is, the such, it is such a nature that it only manifests itself three, four, six months, nine months down the line. Now joining us in studio to expand on this is Matlo Usatati from the SA Consumer Goods Council as well as Professor Frederick Tabit, a food scientist from UNISA. Very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Good Thank morning. You. Now we've heard from the national regulator that uh, the recall process was a precautionary measure and no food poisoning has been recorded at this stage. Uh, Matlo, just starting off with you, in terms of understanding the, the terms, they're speaking here about uh, canned deficiency. What does that actually mean? Well, we uh, thank you and good morning to the viewers at home. Uh, we do appreciate the statement that came out uh, from the national um, uh, regulator, the, the national NRCS. It's better to use um, uh, the, the shortcut sometimes. Yes. Uh, so what she, Macy, has explained, it's clearly that there was a, a process, um, a, a deficiency in the processing of the cans, not so much in the product itself, but in simple terms, it, it could have been a cut. The machine could have malfunctioned, that it, it had the cans cut off when it wasn't uh, supposed to happen in that manner. So that's basically in simple terms what it means. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Prof, just speaking to you about um, processing, I mean, Matlo speaks about processing of the cans, doesn't necessarily speak to it affecting the product. I mean, are those two separate scenarios there? Surely one would assume that if the cans are defaulted, they had some sort of impact on the product. Yeah, I think um, the explanation falls short because the, the, the most established cause-effect relationship. So if they're saying there's an incision, there's no explanation of what the incision is all about. What is it? And, and, and if they say they can't take nine months for them to, to be bloated or to, 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 to start leaking, it means something is happening. And what is this that is happening? So to me, the explanation falls short, and I think the manufacturer must come up and, and provide more technical details on what is going on in those things. And also to separate um, uh, the malfunctioning of the, the, the manufacturing process and the safety of the product to say the product is safe is also not very accurate because that means they've done an investigation to say these products are safe. But uh, to my knowledge, no one has done any investigation or test those products to see what is really going on inside the product or what do we really have inside the product because as of now it's not very clear what is inside the product that is causing those can to bloat and burst after nine months. Mm. Yeah. And what happens to canned food that's been subject to a food safety risk? 
Yeah, I mean, you, you have general food safety regulations, and I'm sure uh, that a manufacturer is having a food safety system in place, and they have certain standards that they follow. So for a product to go out to the market, it's assumed that this product has been prepared in a safe manner and is safe for consumption. So by the time they are releasing the product, they are of the opinion that this product is safe. But if something happens to the product after nine months, I think it has to be properly investigated and explained which I, I don't think is the case now. Mm -hmm. And Michael, just coming to you in terms of ensuring that consumers are protected, I mean, nine months is a long time to only detect this problem only now. What do consumers need to know about um, their, their rights and, and, and where this conversation places them as the consumers of this product? I think first and foremost, as South Africa, we are growing in terms of the consumer understanding what, where their food comes from and what they need to look out for. Especially for canned products, I mean, it's, it's simple things. If you put your products in a cabinet and suddenly you see some rusty um, look on your, on your cabinet, mm -hmm. that's a sign that something could be leaking out of the can. That's the first sign of danger. And if you open a can, simple things, I like sharing practical things for the consumer to, yes. to easily grasp the, the issue. It, when you open the can and it spreads out, so it, it squirts out. So it, it means there was some solen um, type of uh, gathering of, the, of, of air in the can. So those are simple things that a, a consumer needs to look at. But then again, I think it was communicated that if you then return your, your product to, to the various retailers, they, they are in communication with the suppliers, they will um, duly refund the, the consumer. So that is in terms of the Consumer Protection Act in terms of covering the, the consumer. And uh, Prof, just speaking to you about the compulsory specifications, could we in this case have an instance where those compulsory specifications may have been um, you know, missed or overlooked? Yeah, you see the food safety system is very elaborate and there are lots of things to be done along the way, starting from raw material to the final product. So, I mean, if they, they've investigated and they, they, they found out that uh, the, the, the problem is an incision, so that's why I'm saying if they've done their investigation and they know where the problem is, they should be able to tell more details about the problem. But to me, I think uh, overall, and, uh, problems can come from anywhere along the, the, the chain, the production chain. So, but the bottom line is, if you, you think that uh, the product is not safe for consumer, it has to be recorded. And if the consumer can pick up uh, uh, something is wrong with the problem, they also can report back and then you have to record the product and do a thorough investigation. So to me, I think um, that thorough investigation has not taken place. And to conclude that it, it might not be, it, it might be safe and or it's also not good to take chances to say we think um, it, it is safe, you know, because for the product to be safe, it has to be analyzed and proven that it's safe. So if they've not done so, they, they can't say it's only the tin or the packaging, the product itself is not affected. I completely disagree with that. Now, just adding to that, they're saying that no food poisoning has been recorded. But what would happen in an instance where um, consumers have felt some sort of effect from consuming the bloated can? What would happen, meaning what would be the science? What recourse, the, yes. Yeah, yeah. I think the, the, the main microorganism that could be um, of, of high risk would be your Clostridium botulinum um, in terms of it's, it's very resistant to heat and normally after the, the product is sort of um, exposed to that microorganism that could cause um, uh, uh, the potential risk. However, we rely on the NRCS as the, the delegated um, and mandated um, authority to evaluate such. We cannot speak on their behalf. Mm -hmm. So if they say there hasn't been any um, Clostridium or, or any microbiological uh, effects to the consumers, that's what we, we, we have on the table. So we will rely on them to feedback in terms of are those tests having been done. But in terms of how the microorganism will then affect the consumer, it will be your dizziness, you get the headaches, and you get your, muscle, your muscles will start to loosen up a bit. So those are the signs that the consumers will then need to look out for should they have been um, uh, uh, exposed to the product. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, just adding to that uh, discussion about the microbiological effects and the impact that these would have on one's body, as well as understanding the science behind canned food products. 
How does that all pan out in, in terms of ensuring that consumers are aware? Okay, I'll start with the science. The science is, 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 is straightforward. You're supposed to package um, the fish in the can, and then you seal the can airtight in um, um, anaerobic conditions. It means you remove the oxygen from the, the, the can, and then you, 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 you cook it at a particular temperature. So that temperature is supposed to kill all the bacteria, you see. So, but now, what I don't understand is they're saying incision. They're not saying it's a, it's a bacteria uh, problem because we're just assuming. So assuming that it's a bacteria problem, it could be uh, any bacteria, but like she said, Clostridium botulinum is one of the, the bacteria of concern because that one produces toxins mm -hmm. that can be fatal. Then the, the fatality will, will depend upon the, the vulnerability, you understand? Like those people who are, 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 are like children will be more vulnerable, uh, people with HIV and AIDS will be more vulnerable, the elderly will be more vulnerable, so the vulnerability varies, you understand? And also it also varies with the amount that you will consume. Because I take it that most of the people who use the pickup things, they use it to prepare b a bigger uh, dish. Mm -hmm. They don't just eat it like that. That's why the effect can be, be mild, because I assume that they don't consume lots of uh, a portion uh, at once. Mm. So that's, that's, that may be the reason why we are not going to get fatalities or we are not going to get really sick people. But you know, you can, never, you can never know how people consume this product. And, and very lastly, before I let you go, I mean, there's been a lot of debate and discussions around moving away from canned items, that they're not good for the environment and they're not good um, for, for many other aspects in terms of health and the risks that we've just been exposed for. Is gloss the answer? No, I completely disagree because if you take away the, the canned product, and then, then we are going to fall short. Remember, dealing with the coal line is also problematic. We are not safe there as well. Mm -hmm. So we need to, to work with all the technologies that we have, use it the best we can. And you know these outbreaks, are not, uh, uh, they don't occur every day. The, we have isolated cases. It's just the manner at which it's being dealt with to me because there's lack of transparency. Mm -hmm. And if it's a bacterial infection, just come up and say, okay, we experienced bacterial infection and we think maybe it's our raw material or maybe our, our cooking was not properly done because of one, two, three reasons. Then everyone will understand, and we are fixing the problem. So going forward, everything will be fine. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Is there anything you want to add? Um, I think um, in food science and technology, this uh, preservation method has been tested, and we, we rely on it because for food security also, for people that do not have storage, yes. with our energy regulator and, and provider having a bit of challenges. Mm -hmm. So we need to look at the holistic view in terms of for us to be food secure we need various uh, food preservation and, and canning is one of them. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you okay. to you both you. for you. that uh, thorough analysis. Uh, the um, uh, SA Consumer Goods Council's Matlo Siddhati as well as a food scientist from UNISA, Professor Frederick Tabit, just giving us some more in-depth understanding as this uh, um, you know, canned situation is really just uh, causing a lot of panic in households across the country. Pilchards, of course, being recalled a certain type of pull charts.